Good evening. Thank you for attending tonight's public information session, whether you are here in person or on the phone or watching on your computer, uh, we welcome you. Obviously, we wanted to bring you this information session so that you could learn more about the hows and whys of reassessment, and also it's an opportunity to ask questions uh, of Mr. Joseph Eminger. Uh, this evening, we thought it would be helpful to bring in Mr. Joseph Eminger. He's an independent assessor out of the Buffalo area. Uh, he's president of Eminger, Newton, Pigeon, and Megger, specializing in real estate valuation and also providing consultant services throughout the Western New York region. Uh, Mr. Eminger will be giving a presentation and then there will be time for questions afterwards. I'll be back up here to moderate asking questions um, between in person, on the phone, and through the website. So um, I'll be back up here in just a bit, but for now I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Eminger. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor, for that introduction. And uh, before we get started, I just want to apologize for having to do this remotely. Uh, I would uh, love to be there in person with you tonight. Unfortunately, uh, a tendon in my foot had other uh, thoughts. I, I ruptured a tendon in my foot about a month ago, and uh, I'm on uh, non-weight-bearing uh, duty for the, for, for the last month, and I have another week and a half or so to go for that. So, so uh, I do appreciate the opportunity to come before you tonight, though, and, and talk about some uh, common uh, misconceptions, conceptions about reassessment projects in general. Okay, we were, uh, we were not involved in the project, but uh, all or most reassessment projects work the same way. And uh, so I'm gonna go through uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, things that we have done. We've been doing this for about 15 years now, my firm, and uh, we've done them throughout New York State. And uh, we're uh, just gonna, uh, my presentation will last probably around uh, 35, uh, 40 minutes or so, depending on how uh, talkative I am. Uh, all the questions will be uh, at the end. Uh, where we can uh, be glad to answer any questions that you have. The, uh, the, uh, this presentation does not get into individual properties in the town of Penfield. This, uh, you know, this is going to be a, a reassessment presentation, not an individual property presentation. So, uh, but we'll, I'll be able to uh, go through a lot of things to show you a lot of things, what a reassessment project is, and on the same foot, uh, also what a reassessment project is not. Uh, so, uh, well, with that being said, uh, I'll, uh, we'll get started with the presentation and uh, the, the, uh, the project uh, of the, uh, the goal of the project, uh, the Penfield Reassessment Project, like it is in every municipality that goes through a reassessment project, is to create uh, fair and equitable assessments. Okay, you want to uh, establish uniform, fair and ass uh, equitable assessments on all real estate property types. You're going to hear me say fair and equitable several times throughout this presentation because that uh, that really is the goal. Uh, without a reassessment project, you will get inequities in the role. And uh, uh, people, the assessments uh, at some point will be too high. And at other times, you'll have people whose assessments are too low. So uh, we just want to create fair and equitable assessments. So. What a reassessment project does not do, it does not raise the tax levy. Okay, this is, a, this is an important point. The reassessment provides an equitable redistribution of the property tax. Okay, um, there's only one group of people who can uh, uh, raise your taxes. Okay, and that is not the assessor or the assessor's office. They have no control over what happens to your uh, taxes. Okay, the tax levies are set by either the town board, the village board, the school district board, or the county legislatures. Okay, this project, a reassessment project, is a valuation project. It is not a taxation project. Okay, and a lot of times uh, people get the, get confused with that. This is a valuation project. So if you have an issue with your new assessment, you should come and talk to your assessor or your board of assessor review. And that's not only this year, that's every year. If you, if you have a problem with your taxes, 
you do not come to the assessor because they can't help you with that. You need to go to your taxing board, which would be your town board, as I just said earlier, town board, village board, school board, or uh, your county legislature. So you're gonna learn two terms. I'm gonna try and teach you two terms tonight that are people get, uh, the people use them interchangeably a lot, but they're very different. And you need to understand both of them uh, a little bit more to understand uh, the reassessment process. Okay, and those terms are budget and levy or tax levy. Okay, as I just said, the taxing jurisdictions, your towns, uh, school or county, they are responsible for developing a budget. Okay, the budget is the total revenue from all sources. Okay, it includes, it includes property tax, but it also includes revenues from uh, uh, state aid, uh, revenue from uh, 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 fees that are generated by your town, uh, and uh, other, all includes all other sources that are, uh, that are generated. So you end up with the top number, which is your revenue number. And from those revenues, you must subtract the operating expenses to operate the town. So, okay, I'm just gonna give you round numbers here. If you have a, if you have a $15 million uh, budget and you have ex operating expenses of $10 million, your, uh, uh, there's a, leaves a number of $5 million. That $5 million at the bottom is the tax levy. And that's the number that has to be uh, uh, raised through taxation by the taxing jurisdiction, okay? It's the tax levy that the 2% tax cap applies to, okay? Hopefully most or all of you are aware, back in 2011, uh, the state legislature adopted uh, a, a new uh, law that uh, went into effect in 2012 that is better known as the tax cap. Uh, and that uh, makes uh, taxing jurisdictions, all taxing jurisdictions, whether it be town, town, school districts, uh, uh, fire districts, all taxing jurisdictions in the state of New York uh, uh, have to abide by this tax, uh, by this 2% tax cap. And what it's, the tax cap is, it's the lesser of 2% or the increase in CPI. Okay, for a lot of years, from like 2012 to 2015, 16, 17, it was, it was under 2%. Okay, the last couple of years, it's been right around 2%. Okay, next year, I would anticipate, quite frankly, with, uh, <laughs> with the uh, uh, inflationary trends that we're seeing now, uh, CPI is gonna be over 2%. So you're gonna, you're gonna see uh, the tax cap once again being at uh, 2% uh, next year, I'm, I'm, I'm positive of that. Uh, but remember, the tax levy, that's the number that can only go up 2%. It's not the budget that, go to, that is restricted to 2%, it's the tax levy that's limited to 2%, okay? So there are two additional factors besides the levy that determine your property taxes, okay? The tax rate is one of them, okay? The tax rate is determined by dividing the tax levy that I just spoke about by the total taxable assessed value of all taxable real property in your town, okay? Note, I did not say the total assessed value in your town, it's the total taxable uh, assessed value. The tax rate does not take into consideration those properties that are tax exempt, your hospitals, your churches, uh, and other uh, uh, nonprofit properties. Those do not go into determination of the tax rate. The assessments do play a role in your, in, in your taxes because they are, deter uh, they are uh, your assessment. We work, live in a state, uh, New York State, which operates under ad valorem taxes. That's, the, that's what assessors have to assess property at. That's at value, at market value. So it is one of the components. I know you can't see it on the bottom of your screen, so you're gonna have to take my word for it. I'm gonna show you how the tax rate is calculated. And these are hypothetical numbers, but you can use them, you can use the same numbers 
in uh, in Penfield, as long as you have the know what the tax levy is. I would use last year because you don't have it going forward. You don't have that information yet. But look at what last year's tax levy was. Look at what last year's taxable total taxable assessed value was. You divide that and that'll get you your uh, your tax rate. So in this example, the tax levy is $10 million. Trust me, you have to trust me on this. $10 million, you divide that by the total taxable assessed value or the $500 million. And that gives you a rate of two cents, okay? Two cents, but remember it's per thousand. The tax rate is per thousand. So you gotta take that two cents times a thousand and that'll give you your $20 uh, 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 per thousand a share for your uh, for your taxes. So that's how the tax rate is derived at. The good news is, okay, and the, another misconception uh, with reassessment projects, a lot of people believe that when they get their, uh, uh, their notices and they see, and I'm sure some of you thought that too, and maybe still do think this, uh, when you saw your notice and you saw your assessments were going up 30, 40, 50%, or more in some cases, you may have thought that your taxes would be going up 30 or 40 or 50% or more. And that's not true because what happens when you do a reassessment project is the tax rate drops uh, uh, accordingly. So you're, so there's gonna be a break even point where you're, if your taxes are going, uh, I'm sorry, if your assessment is going up, let's say 30%, your taxes could remain the same. And I'm going to get into a, an example of uh, these things a little bit later uh, in my presentation. So just because your assessment's going up 30, 40, 50 percent, that doesn't mean your taxes are going up 30, 40, or 50 percent. Okay, so uh, remember that uh, although the assessments play an integral part in the tax calculation, it's the tax levy that's the controlling factor. And that's what I would ask you to remember tonight going forward. Pay attention to what the tax levy is doing in all your taxing jurisdictions, not only the town, but also your school district and your county legislature. Because if the tax levies are going up, that's a pretty good indication that your taxes are gonna be going up, okay? So keep that in mind. That's, the one, that's one of the key points I want you to take away from the night. Pay attention to the tax levy and what it's doing every year going forward, okay? Your assessed value, uh, the last time you went through a reassessment project was in 2014, okay? Your assessed value uh, probably hasn't changed, some of you hasn't changed since 2014, and it hasn't changed maybe in the last three years or, or longer, okay? <clears throat> but what's happened in the last three to eight years, I, I, I would, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, what's happened in the last three to eight years is your tax bill has probably increased. And why has your tax bill increased? Why your assessment has stayed the same is because the levy increase. It gets back to my point. Pay attention to the tax levy. Your assessment can stay flat like it has been for the last seven, eight years, and your taxes will go up. And the reason for that is because the tax levy is going up. Okay, so how are assessments handled in New York State? New York State operates uh, under real property tax law 305, meaning that all real property in each assessing unit shall be assessed at a uniform percentage of value. Now they don't tell you what that uniform percentage of value is, the state. All they tell you is it has to be at a uniform percentage of value. Right now in Penfield, I believe the uh, equalization rate uh, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Eighty-five percent, I think, may, uh, perhaps eighty-five uh, um, percent. And it's uh, and if you weren't doing a reassessment project, it'd be going. Uh, it'd be even going down further next year. But uh, you're at eighty-five percent. That means every property in the town of Penfield gets assessed at eighty-five percent of market value. That's what the state puts on it. That equalization rate, that level of assessment, is put on by the state. It's not put on by the assessor's office. It's not put on by the town board. It's put on by New York uh, State Office of Real Property uh, Taxation. Okay, and they go around every year to every municipality and they put an equalization rate level assessment on every year based on the home sales that have occurred in the prior year. And they look at those home sales and they look at what those homes then are assessed at 
and they uh, determine what the level of assessment or equalization rate should be. In Penfield, it was 85% last year. Going forward this year, at least it'll be at 100%. Okay, so what it value is determined? It's market value, and that's the most probable sale price in a competitive and open market between a willing and knowledgeable buyer and seller made without the rest to either party. Okay, all sales that were considered by the assessor in this project are not market level sales. There are sales that are not valid. They are, could be, they could be. Uh, this under distress, they could be a foreclosure sale. Uh, in some instances, you have uh, estate sales, which are not considered, so they wouldn't be considered at market level. Okay, so not all sales are, are, are what we call valid sales for the project, but market value is defined as the most probable price, uh, sale price in a competitive and open market between a willing and knowledgeable buyer and seller without duress. Okay, the tax bills, one of the great things that New York State has done over the past, I'm going to say 10, 12 years, they make sure that on each tax bill now, it displays the uh, municipality's uniform percentage or equalization rate. So if you look at your tax bill that you paid in January and February this year, it'll show you what your level of assessment is. Okay, so you under so you understand uh, what you're being assessed at going forward you're gonna be uh, at 100%, so it's gonna be very easy to figure out that your market, they're saying your market value equals your assessed value. So very easy to understand on that. So when you're at 100%, one of the benefits is that you get the full star exemption. It's not a percentage based on your equalization rate. Veterans get their full exemption. And most importantly, your assessed value is at your market value. So equity assessment. Okay, as I said earlier, equity with respect to assessments and real property taxes means that the properties are assessed at a uniform percentage of value, 100%. The further you get away from doing a reassessment project, the lower the uniform percentage of value gets. For example, I just said you're at 85%. Okay, so what happens is that 85% gets applied to every property. There are different locations in the town of Penfield that appreciate or depreciate at different values. If you're not doing a reassessment project, that hurts a lot of people in the town because some people will end up paying too much in property tax because they're gonna be overassessed and vice versa. You're gonna have people who are being underassessed who uh, the rest of the town is subsidizing their taxes. So all we want to achieve with this project is that properties with similar values pay similar taxes. Nobody likes to pay taxes, okay? That's just the fact of life, okay? But we, we live in a state, we live in a country that is founded on real property taxes being able to support the local services. So you, you, you need to remember that it's not, you should not be looking at how much your property assessment went up from one year to the next year. Okay, now what you need to be concentrating on is what you can sell your property for at, the, at, the, at this time, because that's the job that the assessor has to do. He's looking at what the market value of your property is as of today, or actually as of uh, March 1st. Well, you're looking at, at it as of what it was today. Property values, as I'm sure most or all of you are aware of, have increased significantly. And that's, uh, that's probably not a big enough word, but it's increased significantly over the past several years and even longer. It's gone, they've gone up significantly, okay? Uh, people are paying forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars or more over asking price. Okay, that's the market. They, you know, the, that's the market. What you want to make sure that you're doing though is you want to make sure that what your assessment, your current assessment, is 
either below what you think you could sell it for, and I'm just being honest for you, with, with you, okay, if you think it's below what you could sell it for, I don't, you're probably not on this call, I would, I would, or at this meeting, I would guess, okay? <laughs> but, but if you think it's below what you're selling for or at what you think you could sell it for, then you really don't have an argument with the assessor. Again, you would want to make sure you're just paying your fair share. If you're at those levels, you'll be paying your fair share. Equity is always the goal, okay? And New York State requires that every property be assessed at a uniform percentage of value. And when assessment equity exists, it ensures that the tax burden is distributed equally and fairly among all taxpayers. If you have a property, and I'm gonna get in this example in a little bit, if you have a property that's under assessed, that means they're not paying their fair share. They're paying under their fair share. And that means the rest of the town is subsidizing all those people who are under assessed and vice versa. If you're over assessed, okay, you're being, for lack of a better word, penalized and you're paying more than your fair share. So your goal every year is to just make sure that you're paying your fair share of your tax. There's no getting around not being not paying your taxes, but you just want to make sure you're paying your fair share of the tax. So again, if one property or neighborhood is significantly underassessed, they are not only paying too little in taxes, but other property owners are subsidizing that taxpayers or that neighborhood's share of the tax bill. And here's some examples that I'm going to show you. Uh, these are not examples uh, from Penfield, uh, but uh, I'm sure this happened in Penfield because it happens in every community that goes through a reassessment project. Okay, two homes, center entrance colonials, uh, fairly similar to each other. Uh, back in 2014, they were both has had a market value assessment of $100,000. They were, that was their full market value and they were assessed at their full market value of $100,000. Fast forward to 2022, and Mrs. Smith's property is now worth $300,000. She could sell the property for $300,000. Mrs. Jones' property has a value, has gone up a lot, but it's only gone up 50%, uh, so it's gone up to $150,000. But the assessed values before a reassessment project still had the assessed values at $100,000. So what happens in this instance? Mrs. Jones is subsidizing Mrs. Smith's taxes because Mrs. Smith is significantly underassessed. So there are three, uh, three, uh, three things that can happen with a reassessment project in terms of your taxes and your assessment. And I'm going to go through all of them. Uh, excuse me, uh, I cough just a minute. <coughs> Getting over a cold. So here's the first thing that's gonna happen, and this uh, will, will happen in the town of Penfield, guaranteed, okay? Your assessment could increase, but your tax bill could decrease. This is gonna happen in the town of Penfield, okay? So what happens here last year, and this is again, hypothetical, somebody's assessment is $100,000, the total taxable value of the town hypothetically was $50 million. The tax levy that had to be put on by the uh, town uh, fathers and mothers on the town board was $1,500,000. The tax rate for the year is $30 per thousand. And how do you get that? You take the tax levy, I gave you that example in the beginning of the slide presentation, you take the tax levy, divide it by the total taxable value of the town, uh, multiply by it'll be uh, three cents, and then you multiply that by a thousand because you're doing it per thousand, and you end up with thirty dollars per thousand. And your tax bill, you take the thirty dollars times one hundred. Your assessment's a hundred thousand dollars, but again, you got to divide it by a thousand because you're doing it per thousand. So you take thirty times one hundred. That gets you your tax bill of three thousand dollars. Fast forward to this year, your assessment went up. 5%, so now you're at $105,000. The total taxable value in the town went up 
higher than what your assessment went up. So now the total taxable value of the town is at $54 million. The tax levy, the town board did their job the best that they could, and they've maintained a level tax levy. So now the tax rate you get by taking the million five divided by the 54 million times a thousand, and that gets you $27.78 per thousand dollars of assessed valuation. It take that figure times 105, times 105, and you get a tax rate, <coughs> a tax bill, I'm sorry, of $2,917 a decrease of $83, your assessment went up, but your tax bill went down. That's gonna happen to people in the town of Penfield, guaranteed. The next thing that can happen is that your assessment could increase and your tax bill could stay the same. And that's gonna, this is gonna happen as well with people in Penfield. <coughs> On the left-hand side, everything stays the same. $100,000 assessment, total taxable value of the town, 50 million, tax levy stays the same, $30 a thousand and $3,000 tax bill. Over on the right side, your assessment increased 5% again. So that, uh, but the total and the total taxable value of the town stayed that 8% increase, 54 million. In this example though, the tax levy went up. Okay, it had to go up maybe for they had road projects they had they had to work on, water and sewer projects that they had to, had a had a bond and pay for. It went up 2.86%. So the tax levy is one million five hundred forty two thousand eight hundred fifty-five dollars. You take the uh, the tax rate again, but hopefully by now you know how to get that. The one million five forty two eight fifty-five divided into fifty-four million. Uh, times a thousand gets you the tax rate of twenty eight dollars fifty seven cents per thousand. You take that figure times one hundred and five, and you get a tax uh, bill of three thousand dollars. Now, some of you are probably saying, "But Joe, you just said the tax levy is two percent. How can the tax levy go up higher than two percent?" Well. Leave it up to New York State, okay? They, they have uh, exclusions. Uh, if you are under the tax cap in the previous year, you can carry over that amount that you were under to the next year. So in this case, I'm gonna just say last year, they would have been at, instead of being at 2%, last year they were at 1.14%. So they were able to carry over 0.86% for, for this year. That's how the tax levy could go up, but it's only a one year. It's only good for one year. They can't, you know, you can't keep accumulating those uh, those uh, those reductions in the uh, in the in the tax levy. So that's that example. The third example <coughs> will not happen in the town of Penfield, but I do want to show it, to you, and I'll explain why it's not going to happen in the town of Penfield. Okay, it's where your assessment. This is what I call Armageddon. Your assessment could decrease, and your tax bill could increase, okay? Uh, the fact that your assessment is going up, and I know a lot of people won't like to hear this, but uh, I'm, I'm just speaking personally now, I guess, okay? If my assessment is going up every year, that makes me feel good, okay? Because my home is my biggest asset. It's my largest asset. And I want that asset to keep appreciating every year. So, uh, but I only wanna be paying my fair share. I don't want to be make it appreciating more than it should be appreciating. Uh, but the fact that your assessment is increasing every year uh, is, is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, the same example on the left hand side, as I've given in the two previous examples, but on the right side this year, instead of your assessment going up 5%, it went down 5%. Okay, the total taxable value of the town also decreased down to forty-seven million five hundred thousand dollars and this is why this total taxable value of the taxation of the town uh going down that's why this example will not happen in penfield because the total taxable value of the town went up but i'm just showing this for demonstration purposes the tax levy went up the same 2.86 percent so you end up with a much higher tax rate per thousand you you take that higher rate even though you're multiplying it by a lower assessed value of 95, you still get a slightly higher 
a tax bill of $3,085.60. So those are the three examples. Your assessment could increase and your tax bill could decrease. People are going to see that. Your assessment could increase and your tax bill could stay the same. People are going to see that. Your assessment could decrease and your tax bill could increase. That's your not going to see. <coughs> so remember, your property taxes are based on the value of your home, the market value of your home, ad valorem. And the value is defined as market value, what a willing seller and a willing buyer in a fair and open market are willing to pay. You want to pay only your fair share of your taxes. Okay, so the assessor has no skin in this game, okay, for lack of a better word. Okay, no skin. Nothing the assessor can do will change the total dollar figure to be raised by taxation. The assessor could lower everybody's assessment in the town of Penfield 60% in the upcoming year. Everybody gets a 60% reduction in their assessment, okay? And your tax bill next year would be exactly the same to the penny, to the penny as it was before, because everybody's assessment got reduced. Again, the determining, the primary, the, the primary factor determining your taxes is the tax levy. The assessor only determines the proportionate amount that you pay, the pie, it's the pie. That's the 2%, that, 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 that uh, graph that I'm showing here, that is the same size, relatively speaking, every year. It can only go up plus or minus 2%, roughly, okay? So all the assessor is doing is cutting the pie up in slightly different pieces to make sure that everybody is paying his or her fair share of taxes only. So why are reassessment, uh, frequently reassessments necessary? Well, we, we're living through the time right now. Real estate market is constantly changing. You're seeing influxes in value over the last couple of years, particularly <coughs> that we haven't seen in, in my lifetime, okay? Now, a question some of you may be asking is, okay, Joe, property value, we're doing a reassessment project in our town now when property values are escalating. What happens if the bubble burst and the market value goes down uh, and probably what's going to happen then? Well, frankly, they're going to do a reassessment project and you're going to you're going to see lower uh, uh, values on your real estate. But what I just alluded to a little earlier, just because you're having lower values doesn't mean that you're going to have lower taxes, because uh, uh, remember, it's the tax levy that's going to determine how much your taxes are. Not all properties change in this at, in value at the same rate. You have properties that uh, residential properties, either on the waterfront, okay, uh, they're probably appreciating at a higher rate. You have properties next to maybe an industrial facility, they're they're appreciating at a different rate. Uh, so when you have a reassessment project, you're going to be able to look at these neighborhoods alone and see how each of these neighborhoods is increasing or decreasing in value. If you do not do a reassessment project, that equalization rate or level of assessment gets applied to every property in the town, whether you're on the waterfront or next to an old industrial plant. So as the value changes, so does your share of the tax levy. You only want to pay your fair share. So how is market value determined? Okay, the assessor does not create market value. Who creates the market value in your town? You do. The buyers and sellers of real estate in Penfield create the market value. The assessor doesn't. Market value is determined by the buyers and sellers. What the assessor does is they monitor and analyze the real estate transactions to establish market value estimates for the real property. What drives the market value? 
This was the this was 5,000 years ago. This was the main reason, and it's the main reason today. Location, location, location. We've all heard that, that real estate analogy made, and it still holds true today. Some locations are more desirable than others, whether it be a lakefront property or lakeview property. Some people may prefer to live in or near a city, and others may want to live out in the country. Uh, that's what drives market value. The style of your home creates market value. Okay, economic influences, whether there's uh, whether whether we're in a recession, going into recession, uh, whether we're booming, those things influence us. As I alluded to just now, the house style, ranch styles, homes are very very popular. As the baby boomers are, um, since I'm one of them, I'll say maturing. <laughs> Some of us are looking to move into uh, smaller one story, one level homes, and they're, they become very popular. And then it becomes those uh, economic, economics 101 supply and demand, and those homes are very much in demand. The type of size and land, interest rates over the past seven, eight years, in my opinion, interest rates have been one of the primary factors in the escalating uh, property values. And why is that? All you have to do is think back to the late uh, 1970s when interest rates on your mortgages were 14, 16 or percent or higher. Okay. Now you had interest rate. Now interest rates are about 5%, which uh, four and a half, five percent which historically is still a great rate. But as recently as last year, you were looking at interest rates at three and a half percent, three and a quarter percent. So what interest rates do, the lower the interest rate, it brings in more buyers into the marketplace. So you have more buyers coming into the marketplace. You have more people looking to buy a home. You have people, 20, 30 people bidding on one, on one home at, at times. And when that happens, you get into a bidding war. And bidding wars escalate the value, uh, increase the values of homes. Now we're in a period very recently where you were going to be interest rates on homes are going to be going up. Okay. Like I said, I've alluded to, they're already into the fours approaching five. Uh, they could go, could go higher. And what that's going to do is that's going to uh, soften, soften the market. I don't think it's going to alleviate the market completely for you're still going to have good property values, uh, but it is going to, uh, it's going to keep some people out of the market for, for buying a home. Okay, uh, waterfront properties obviously drive market value. Commuting distance to the industries drive market value, uh, and uh, the consumer needs uh, needs and condition of the property need to be uh, addressed. So I asked, I told you this before, and this is the this is the sixty four thousand dollar question. Okay, that you need to ask yourself: <coughs> Is the market value? Estimate that you're, the assessor derived on your property, is it a reasonable representation of what you could expect to receive for your property if it was offered for sale in the open market? You have to look yourself in the mirror and say, is it reasonable? Okay. Um, market values, I mean, uh, prices are going up high. Uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, uh, everybody's aware of that. Uh, but you can't be, you shouldn't not be focused on what the increase of your assessment was. You got to be focused on what you could think you could sell your property for. And now I'm going to go uh, off screen a little bit here and I'm going to show the town. The town has a great uh, information on their website for you to use uh, at your fingertips. And, uh, and I'm going to show you uh, briefly uh, what I would do, okay, what I would do if uh, I owned a house in the town of Penfield. And I'm going to get out of this presentation right now, and I'm going to go into the town uh, website. And I'm going to pull up uh, something, hopefully, that I can uh, find it uh, here. Um, no, let me, there we go. Uh, okay, so this is on, uh, hopefully, I don't know if, I, I don't think you can see it, so I got to get out of here, and I got to get on my Zoom site. 
And I got to get this onto my shared screen. I apologize for uh, share screen. Yeah. There. Okay. Now, hopefully, you can see it. Okay. This Excel spreadsheet is on your website, on the assessor's website. It lists all of the sales that you are going to utilize if you want to challenge your assessment. These are the sales that you're gonna use. These are the sales that the assessor has determined to be valid sales, market level sales. Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar, I'm gonna be a little technical here, but this is what I would do in this situation. You got, these are, this is the format that they're on the town website. I, I don't know how they're done on the, I don't know why they're put in, uh, put in this way, but they are, and that, that, that's okay. I'm gonna do, I, I, I wanna find a, a, a property that is similar to mine. I'm gonna own a colonial home, okay? I'm gonna own a colonial home. So I want to do, I'm gonna do a sort for all the properties, colonials, oh, it's gonna be all the homes, but I wanna just look at colonials. I'm gonna sort by, uh, what was up? I'm gonna sort by uh, property uh, style. So I'm gonna get these, and you can, you can play around with this. This is just a great tool for you to utilize. Uh, I can't emphasize that enough, and it's a real, uh, a real credit to your assessor's office that they have this available in this format for you to utilize. Okay, so now it's in reverse order here because I didn't do it alphabetically, but you can see all the townhouse sales are there. Okay, and you can, you can, you can do a secondary search by like style and then by street. But now I'm gonna go down to, I'm gonna go all, look at all the, look at all the ranch sales. Okay, you got all these ranch sales. These are, you wanna compare apples to apples. You don't want to compare an old style home, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. I'm gonna get up to an old style home here. Uh, look at all those ranch sales, a ton of ranch sales. Okay, not so many splits. Uh, you don't have, you don't have, you don't have any old style. Okay. Uh, I'm going down to Colonials. Oh, they're the old style. You don't want to compare an old style home. An old style home, you can see right next to it, year it was built. You don't want to compare a home that was built in 1920 to a home that was built in 1990. Okay, so you, so you want to you go similar style homes, okay? So here are all the colonials, okay? Find your street, find your neighbor, find streets in your neighborhood, okay? See what they're selling for. Check the square footage. See where, see where everything's falling in line and see what they're selling for, okay? And bring in four or five. If you're going to grievance day before the Board of Assessment Review, take this information and use it to your, you know, to your advantage, quite frankly. Show, hey, this is what these properties are selling for in my neighborhood. Similar style homes, similar square footage. This is what I'm getting. Okay. Again, don't don't concentrate on what your assessment went up from last year. Concentrate on what you can sell the property for. That's what you want to focus on. Okay. So uh, I'm going to get back to my uh, to my PowerPoint presentation now. I think that's there. Okay, so now we'll continue on. Uh, so that was just a brief, go on the town website, the assessor's page. There's a lot of tools on there that are very easy to use. Play around with it and help yourself. You know, help yourself uh, 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 to, uh, to uh, uh, help your case if you're going before the board of assessment review. Okay, so. This is the, uh, this is the uh, schedule uh, that most of it has already passed, okay? But the impact notices went out in March, April, 2022. The informal hearings were in March and April, 2022. Everybody's gonna get their uh, hearing results by April 30th coming up. The tentative roll is gonna be filed next week. That's next week already, May 1st, okay? Grievance day is gonna be on Tuesday, May 24th. So if you uh, are uh, not satisfied, uh, uh, or, or I shouldn't say, if you're unhappy with your uh, with your new proposed assessment, if you do your homework, if you do your homework uh, by looking on the website and seeing what properties are selling for, uh, you can uh, call the assessor's office after May 1st, 
and schedule an appointment to get in there. And then the Board of Assessment Review will hold their hearings uh, and their final roll will be on uh, July 1st. That, that's when a roll has to be uh, finalized. So uh, again, what can you do if you have questions? Go, go to the assessor's office, get on the town website. That, that's, that's where I would I'd go immediately, okay? You want to compare similar style homes? <laughs> you, uh, the sales have occurred over the last three, four years. You don't want to use a sale that's six, seven years old. You want to use recent sales. Those are on the website. You don't have to look any further. Uh, you want to make sure that your inventory matches what the assessor has. This is another, this is a key point, okay? You, you measure your square footage of your home. Make sure the square footage of your home that the assessor is showing, what the public records are showing, uh, how many bedrooms they have, how many bathrooms they have. Make sure they're accurate because that, be that can be influencing the value of your property. Measurements are taken from the outside of your home. It's called SFLA, square footage living area. You measure the outside of your home. If you have a one-story ranch-style home, you just take your wheel or your tape measure and you walk it around there. You do not include garage areas. Those That is not living area. You do not include, if it's a ranch-style home, you do not include your finished basement if you have a finished basement. It's just, okay, if you have a split level or a raised ranch, there is an area that is slightly below grade. You do count that. In, in the SFLA, okay? If your information is incorrect, you should go and uh, uh, talk to the assessor, call the assessor's office, okay? Um, Board of Assessor Review meets, like I said, at the end of, uh, end of May uh, coming up. Uh, it's a formal application. It's called RP 524, and believe it or not, it, that's a state form, it's a four-page form, and that form is also on your town website. They're making, the town is making this very easy for the residents to uh, uh, do what they need to do to challenge their assessment if they believe they're honestly over assessed. That application is a four page form, as I just said, found on the website, fill it out, uh, and you bring that in. Uh, the assessor can probably tell you what you need to do when you call to make your schedule your appointment, okay? If you hear, if you hear back, when, when you hear back from the Board of Assessment Review, they're either, uh, let's say your property is, you know, you, they have you at 250,000 and you think it's only worth 225,000 and they come in, the Board of Assessment Review says, well, we think you might not, we don't think you're worth 250, but we think you're worth more than 225. We're gonna assess you at 240. If you're not happy with the results of the Board of Assessment Assess review, you can take it to the next step. And that is going through the SCARD hearing, Small Claims Assessment Review. Up till this point, with the Board of Assessment Review, you haven't had to pay any money. When you get to SCAR, you do have to pay money because there is an application fee. I believe it's still $35. That's set by the state as well. <coughs> and uh, when you go to a SCAR hearing, on residential property, SCAR hearings are for one family homes, two family homes, three family homes, I believe, and that's it. Uh, vacant land and commercial properties cannot go to SCAR. Okay, so uh, if the good news is if you, uh, you go before a hearing officer, they're typically attorneys. You present your case, the town will come in and present their case. I would strongly recommend at this point that you get an appraisal. Strongly recommend it. Is it a requirement? No. But you want an independent opinion of value. And an appraisal by a licensed appraiser will give you that. Uh, the, the good news is if you are successful at SCAR, most of the time, I'm not going to say 100% of the time, but the vast majority of the time, the hearing officer will award you the $35 filing fee back. Uh, if you lose, obviously, if he doesn't agree with you, you lose you lose the <coughs> case and you lose the, uh, you lose the uh, assessment. Now, if you're gonna do a court challenge through a, uh, a commercial property that's called an Article 7 proceeding, 
uh, you have to have an attorney for that. That's much more pricey, much more expensive. You're going to have to pay thousands of dollars for an appraisal. Uh, but uh, that isn't uh, that doesn't apply to uh, residential properties. The burden of proof is always on you, the property owner. Your assessment is always assumed to be correct. That's why you got to use those sales that I just showed you on the uh, on that Excel uh, spreadsheet. You got to use those sales to your advantage, and uh, get sales that are, aren't gonna aren't gonna sh uh, show uh, aren't gonna that are gonna show a lower value. Now, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go back a little bit here. I'm gonna digress a little bit. When you go to the board of assessment review, and I do these presentations. What would I do if I was if I was in in, uh, in your situation? I got a, what I feel is an unjust uh, assessment. Well, let's say you're one of the reasons you uh, you say that. Uh, hey, Joe, my the assessment, the sale prices in my neighborhood are what you, what they're showing on the in that Excel spreadsheet. But I haven't updated my kitchen in 50 years. I got a rundown. I got <coughs> rundown interior. I got roof damage. I got water damage on the wall. At the, you, when you, if you, if you're challenging your assessment based on the condition of your property, okay, you want to bring in photographic evidence, photographic proof, to the board of assessment review, and you want to show them why you believe your assessment is incorrect. The assessor did all; uh, uh, they ju judged your uh, property, your market value home, from the public right away. They, they didn't go in the inside of your homes, and I don't think you want them in the inside of your I wouldn't want them in the inside of my home, okay? But uh, so they haven't been in the inside of your home. That You know your property better than they do. So if you got a condition issue, you got to make the board of assessment review, you got to make the assessor aware of that information. So if you're going to the board of assessment review, you have a condition issue, bring photographs for them to keep so they can review them, okay? The assessor's job, fair assessments, they have, as I said, they have no skin in the game. They have no interest to undervalue or overvalue any real property. The objective is to produce a fair and equitable assessment role for the fair distribution of the real property taxes. Okay, so in a, in a, in a, in a year of a rebound, the tax rate usually decreases. That's a fact. Your tax rate is going to be going down uh, for the upcoming year. For The first bill that this will be applied to will be your 2022 school tax bill in September that you're gonna get. That's what the, the new assessment will be applied to your 2022 school tax. That's gonna be the first tax bill. The first town and county bill that it'll apply to will be the 2023 bill in January. Okay, the tax rate for the school tax bill and the, uh, uh, the town and county bill in, uh, in January will be going down. Tax rate will be going down. Uh, it creates a misconception that increased assessments are causing increasing tax bills. Well, I, I spent the whole presentation talking about that. Okay. Um, this is not a money grab by any stretch of the imagination. The tax cap that I talked about earlier, enacted in 2011 for the 2012 uh, year, okay, residents, business owners, property owners, quite frankly, town boards as well, they should all be embracing that tax cap. Okay, that, uh, that's, uh, that's the levy. That's what controls the spending in the municipalities. Okay, so there's no money grant here. They, they can't, it's not the old days. It's not the pre-2011 where they could raise the tax levy five, six, seven percent a year. Okay, those days are gone. Okay, uh, so the, the, the money grant uh, argument just doesn't, uh, just doesn't hold true anymore like it did 10, 12 years ago and before. So a myth is that assessors raise values in response to the taxing uh, district for revenue. The town needs more money. I just explained to why, why that isn't true. Okay, they, that's not the reason. Okay, the fact is values change in response to economic changes that are in the marketplace. Tax rates will drop proportionally to assessment increase. <coughs> assessors set property taxes. One of the first things I said tonight was that you know this is a valuation project, not a taxation project. Your assessor doesn't set the property taxes because they don't set the tax levy. Tax levy is set by the town board, the school board, and the county legislators. Okay, uh, 
I just said that there. Okay, the assessor is only responsible for facing a fair market value on your property. Taxable status date really doesn't apply here too much, but, but uh, the, for future, I'll just go over it quickly. Uh, taxable status date is March 1st. Okay, whoop. Taxable status date is March 1st. Um, you want to make sure going forward, okay, if you're going to do anything to your property, if you're going to uh, demolish a garage or uh, put up a uh, put up a family room addition, okay, you got to watch that March 1st date. If you if you demolish a garage on March 2nd, remembering that March 1st is taxable status date. If you demolish your garage on March 2nd, well, guess what? You're going to be paying tax on that demolished garage for the upcoming year because you had that that garage had to be down before March 2nd. And you'll see commercial developers tear down property in the month of February for exactly this reason. They want their properties down, so they're only paying value on the vacant land and not the improvement. Okay, and vice versa. If you're putting up a garage, if you're putting up an addition, you want to start that addition on March 2nd. <laughs> okay, so it does. So then you get almost like a free year of uh, of taxes or a, a free year to, uh, to 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 finish it. It won't be on the tax roll. Okay, so uh, tax will say you got exemptions are due on March 1st. March 1st is a, is a very key important date. So again, just reiterating, uh, valuation date is March 1st of the preceding year. Uh, taxable status date is March 1st. Exemption filing date is March 1st. The tentative roll date is May 1st. Grievance day is the fourth Tuesday in May every year. This year, May 24th of this year. And the final roll is filed on July 1st. All right, I'm done. I want to I want to thank you for your attention uh, as I uh, went through my presentation and uh, it went a little longer uh, than I uh, had anticipated. I got a little winded, I guess here, uh, uh, got a little carried away some of it, but I, I did want to make you aware of some of the uh, things that, uh, that I would like to be made aware of if someone was talking to me about it. So at, at this time, I will be happy to answer any questions uh, that the public has. I guess either we're doing it via in-person, via uh, 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 and other, other avenues as well. So I will, I'm at the, uh, uh, the mercy of uh, the, uh, the town to uh, um, turn it over so I can hear the questions and I'll be happy to answer any questions they have. Remember though, folks, we're not, we can't get property specific. Don't get property specific. Uh, be happy to answer general assessment questions uh, 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 as long as we have to tonight, okay? Okay, thank you, Mr. Eminger. So what I'll do is I'll moderate and I'll go back and forth between in-person questions, questions that come in on the phone, or questions that we receive online, if that's okay with you. We'll just keep going around. Yep, thank Okay, you. and then yep, I'll, I'll, I'll also repeat the questions if I don't think you can hear them or see them. Um, so I do wanna just remind everyone, please be respectful. Uh, this is a family-friendly show, um, so again, be respectful. Um, is there anyone in person who would like to ask a question? Okay, we do have several comments that came in online, some of which you've already addressed, Mr. Eminger, but I'll read through them, okay? Sure. sure. Okay, and I'll start at the order they came in. So I'll start at the beginning. The first one is regarding reassessment, will the equalization rates be adjusted so that total taxes paid after the reassessment will be the same or close to those paid pre-reassessment? So yes, the equalization rate will change uh, uh, for the project, okay, once it is, once it is completed. Uh, hopefully you'll be at 100%. Like I said, this year, you were at 85%, as, as I recall. You'll be going up to 100%. That equalization rate, again, is uh, put on by the state of New York. It is not put on by the assessor or the town board. Uh, so, uh, uh, the, um, so yes, the, equal, the equalization rate will definitely uh, be changing at the end of this project. Thank you, and then I also do wanna remind people who want to call in that the number is 340-8771. Um, continuing on, does the town plan to lower the tax rate so that taxes paid based on the newer, much higher 2022 assessed value 
will be equal to the taxes paid based on the 2021 assessed value? And I think we've already well, answered that. Yeah, I did answer that. And equal is the opportune word. Equal is, you know, is uh, uh, the tax rate will most definitely be coming down. Whether it's equal or not is yet to be determined. All right, next comment is, how will this reassessment impact my tax bill? I think that that's been answered through the presentation. I just wanna remind you that you can go back to this presentation. We'll have it posted. It'll be recorded um, so that you can watch it at your convenience and um, go over anything that you would like to hear again. Can the person address when assessments are raised 50% and higher? Mine was 73% increase. I think also we did mention that as well. Why don't you go ahead and just yeah. remind people? Yeah, yeah. Again, the focus should not be on how much your assessment went up. And I know some of you probably experienced sticker shock, for lack of a better word, okay, uh, uh, with, with, with your new assessments. Uh, quite frankly, you could have been underassessed last year. Or when I say last year, <coughs> Excuse me. The last time you were reassessed were back in 2014. So it showed it's going to show a number 2021 assessment and 2022 assessment. And everybody is saying, oh, my assessment went up 73 percent in one year. It really wasn't 73 percent in one year. It was 73 percent over eight years. Still a big number. Still a big number. Don't get me wrong. OK, but that's why you can't focus on the amount that it went up. This is a valuation project. The, the, uh, you have to look at what you can sell your property for today. That's, that's what you got to be concentrating on. I know people are going to be coming and complaining at the Board of Assessor Review about how much my taxes went up and how much uh, uh, the uh, percentage that my uh, assessment went up. The Board of Assessor Review has, can't do anything for you on, on, the, on, those, on those questions. The only thing that the assessor previously and the Board of Assessor Review going forward, what they can help you with at the end of May is prove to them that your property is over a set. You couldn't sell your property for what they have on it. And may, like I said, maybe it's a condition issue. Maybe they have the wrong square footage. You know, things like that. Those all come into play, the valuation of the property. Concentrate on the value, not you know, how much your assessment went up. Okay, moving on, we do have some more comments. Uh, the, the next one is personal to a person doing, uh, trying to get an appointment. So I think what I'm doing, going to do for this person is get their contact information and have the assessor contact them directly if okay with you. That works for me. Okay, next one. I was given a grievance appointment on May 9th, which is after both the May 1st and May 4th deadlines. Will I still be able to have my assessment grievance heard? Yes. Okay. I was, I was, I anticipated this question as well. Okay. If you have appointments in May, there's no more scheduled appointments uh, uh, for an informal review. But those of you who still have appointments uh, that were set up and they are in the beginning of May or middle of May, uh, yes, you should still go to those appointments and meet with the uh, assessor or whomever. And uh, uh, you will enter into something that is called a stipulation. I don't want to get into, you're going to, if, if the assessor uh, 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 concurs that, uh, that a reduction is warranted, uh, you'll be able to enter into a stipulation, and uh, uh, which is the same thing as, as, as getting your assessment reduced. So uh, keep your appointments. If you do have May appointments that have already been set, keep those appointments and, uh, and if you're and then if you're still not happy at that point with your with your informal review, if you're not happy, you can schedule in another appointment with the board of assessor review at the end of the month. OK, I'm going to go to a person who's on hold, um, Mark Lester, and you can answer your question. Ask your question now. Uh, yes, I was uh, wondering, you referred to uh, over assessed and under assessed properties. Uh, what is the percentage of properties whose assessments have gone down in the town of Penfield? I, I was not involved in the project. My firm was not involved in the project, so I don't have that. Uh, I don't have that information available. I'm sorry. Uh, an old general rule of thumb uh, is a third of the properties when you do a reassessment property, uh, a reassessment project, a third of the properties go up in value. A third of the properties go down in value, and a third stay the same. I'm going to be honest with you. I think in the in the environment that we are today, 
I, I don't think those numbers are holding true. I would say more, uh, a, a vast majority more, maybe maybe uh, 80% of the properties uh, you know, went up it's, it's to some degree. Uh, uh, and maybe you know, some stayed the same roughly, and then a smaller, much smaller percentage would have gone down. Okay, is there any way to get that, uh, the actual percentage? Uh, you you would have to reach out to the ass assessor's office and see if they have that information available. Yep, the assessor okay. would have that information. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for calling in. Um, and then uh, another one online. I bought my house this year, so my house was assessed at what I bought it. How can I find out if the houses that are the exact same model in my exact neighborhood were assessed at the same value? Okay, I, this is one thing that I do not know if, if it's on the if it's on the uh, assessor's website or not. When, when uh, 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 so I, I don't know if that information is available. When when we do a project, we we put on the assessments for the entire town. I don't know if that was done uh, in the. I apologize for not knowing that answer. Actually, but, I believe we uh, have I'll, open roles, so they will be open in May. Yeah, and you, so you'll be able. Okay, so yeah, so they usually have those on a Saturday, I believe. Uh, and uh, you'll be able to go in and uh, meet and review the role, and you'll be able to see uh, every property in, in your neighborhood and see how you're equitably assessed. So um, again, you want to look at that Excel spreadsheet on the town website. If you you know your your property, you can see what properties are selling for in your neighborhood, and uh, and uh, see if um, see if you're equitably assessed. I'll elaborate on this a little bit because uh, I think she this individual he or she brought up a question, uh, I guess, challenging, comparing assessments, okay, as, a, as, as opposed to using market sales to challenge your assessment, they're gonna use market assessments. Can you use that? Yes, you absolutely can. But if you're gonna challenge uh, based on assessments, you have to have a large sample. You just, I, I said, you know, bring in three, four sales, of properties to challenge your assessment, and that's what you can do if you're using sales. If you're gonna challenge assessments, I wouldn't come in with less than maybe 100 or 200 assessments that you think are, you just can't bring in three or four assessments and say, based on those three or four, you, you deserve a reduction. Uh, it's much more difficult to, to prove, to get an assessment reduction based on comparable assessments unless you have a large enough sample to prove that. Thank you very much. Um, any last call in the audience? Would you like to come up to the microphone, please? Uh, yeah, I have a couple of questions. Um, so if Penfield's reassessing right now and other towns have decided not to, uh, I know that you talked about the tax levy. So there's a tax levy for town and school, and I guess there's a tax levy for county. So it seems that if these other towns aren't reassessing at this point, Penfield residents would be paying a proportionally higher percentage of that tax levy if others aren't being uh, reassessed at this point, other towns. So, so, that, so that would be on your county tax bill? Is that what, right. you're, is yes. that what you're questioning? Right, so it seems like yeah, county yeah. taxes, that, we'd be paying proportionally higher. Yeah, but th that's where the equalization rates come into play though. Because the equalization rates in those towns that aren't doing reassessment projects have lower lower equalization rates, so they bring their taxable value up. Okay. Uh, uh, now, is it is it is it accurate? I, you know, I you know, I, I I guess you could make an argument maybe it's not accurate, but it, but it's but it's definitely uh, uh, it's definitely being part of the uh, formulation for your county taxes. The equalization rate comes into play and equalizes those towns that aren't doing a reassessment project. All right, so we have to trust that that, <laughs> that that is fair and equitable, I guess. And that's the state that does the equalization rate, correct, Joe? Correct. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, the other question I had was, um, there's an example on the Penfield website that shows how to do comps uh, based on sales. And yeah. um, okay. so I've been looking at that but it's very hard to find something that's exactly the same, you know? So how do we know how much to adjust for, let's say a different, you know, more bathrooms, bedrooms, garage space, or yeah. even a ranch yeah. versus a colonial? Uh, 
Yeah, I, uh, I, I saw that on the, uh, uh, on the website. Again, it's another tool uh, that you can use, but because you don't have the experience, uh, and nor, nor should you have the experience of being an appraiser. I mean, I've been doing this for 40 years now. You know, I can do it in my sleep. Uh, but most people don't don't have that experience. I mean, and every, everything is relative as to what you should adjust for. And, and you hit the nail. You said something very key that I forgot to bring up in my presentation. You said there's no two properties alike. Right. Th th that is so true. OK, there, there are no two properties that are exactly alike. You'll have two neighbors saying my house, you know, the one's assessed a little higher than the other one. They'll say my house is exactly alike. Well, no, you know, they'll find, come to find out there, there's probably 50 square feet difference. And one has a patio. The other one doesn't have a patio. You know, one has a uh, has a uh, has an in-ground pool. One doesn't have an in-ground pool. So there, there are no two properties that, that are, are, are exactly alike. Um, I think that tool that you're talking about is uh, is one of the tools that you should be using. Try to you know try to you know as long as you're consistent with how you're adjusting, I think you'll be all right. Okay, but you just got to be okay. consistent. You know whether you're making a five thousand dollar adjustment or a eight thousand adjustment for an item, as long as you're using the as long as you're being consistent with your with your uh, uh, how you're arriving at the adjustment, I, I I think you'll I think you'll be uh, all right. But I go back to the you know to the sales. Uh, try and find sales. Uh, you know, if, if you're within 200 square feet of each other, that's a that's a great cap to use. 300 square feet of each other, that's a great cap. If you got homes that are 15 years apart in age, that's a, you know those are great caps. Most of the problems that I see when the, when people get, get into trying to challenge their assessment or their tax uh, assessment cases, they try to be too exact. They want to find uh, square footage within 50 square feet. They want to find homes that were built within a year of each other. Give yourself a little, you'll drive yourself crazy trying to find camps <laughs> like that. Right. Give, give yourself a little leeway uh, in, that, uh, in that situation. And just be, you know, again, just be, just be honest with yourself uh, and, and be truthful. You know, just, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're just, you know, you're just trying to be fair. You know, you're like I said, you know, the assessor's trying to be fair and equitable. Well, you, you as a property owner are trying to be fair too. And as long as you treat the assessor and the board of assessor review fair, uh, I, you know, I think you'll, I think you'll be uh, surprised at how they treat you. Okay. Well, um, I mean, specifically, uh, a ranch versus a colonial. I mean, do you have any don't idea? Use it. Don't, 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 don't do that. Well, I mean, can't for me, I almost have compare. to because of my property, <laughs> because well, there aren't yeah, enough yeah. other assessments out there. I mean, okay, other well, uh, sales. I, I mean, I'm sorry, sales. Okay, okay, I, I understand that. But when you're when you're getting into comparing different style homes, especially you're using a ranch home to a colonial, uh, you know, you're you're going to have to you're going to have to adjust that ranch style home probably downward. Um, you mean the colonials? Worth less. Well, more? right. Well, if you were, do you own the ranch or the colonial? I own the have? ranch. You own the ranch, so yes. you're going to have to adjust the colonial downward. Col no, the colonial downward. Because the ranch is superior. Oh, okay. All right, but you don't have a percentage difference. <laughs> no, no. Uh, the, you know the beauty about okay. appraising and assessing is not an exact science. Yeah. Well, you know, the reason I'm know, looking at that particular another house that's a colonial is because it was sold on my street yep you know so okay all right thank you thank um you. before we go back into the audience there is someone on hold ann if you'd like to give your question to mr eminger well thank you this is not a necessarily an assessment question but as a result of the assessment are the star and enhanced star credits going to be changed? They haven't been changed in three years. You're talking about the uh, the income limits? No, I'm talking in star and enhanced star. The the credit that we've been given isn't ch has not changed for three years, and there's a statement on it those, that those, it can't yes, be increased. Those, 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 those should be going up. They should. Yeah. Well, that's what, that's what I was hoping, and I appreciate yeah. your you're letting me know that. And the yeah. enhanced star is still automatic. Okay, it, am I correct? 
that you know they they played so many games with the with the enhanced star of the star in New York State over the past five six years. Uh, I I, uh, yeah. I I think it's automatic, but don't hold me to it. I really don't want. Yeah, I don't want to answer that either. Call so just assessor. check with the Call state. The right. We'll keep putting it on the, the assessor. Call the assessor. <laughs> Okay, well, very good, but you answered my main question about the, the star credit, and I appreciate yep. your help. You're welcome. Thank you. I just Bye -bye. Want, I know there was someone else who wanted to speak, and then we'll go back. Is there anyone else who... Okay. Uh, I'm curious, from a, a ex assessor's perspective, as an example, take a house that's 25 years old, and if you've done interior renovations, okay, how much do you look at that? What, what's your level of increasing your assessment depending on renovations? Okay, okay. Uh, this is going to take a little long answer, but it's a great question, and it's a question that I probably should have addressed during the presentation. Okay, as I alluded to earlier, the assessor is looking at any assessor, any real property assessment uh, contractor, they are looking at your property from the public right away. They have not been inside your home, okay? Uh, so they do not know the condition of the inside of your home. Uh, what they do know, however, is the condition of the outside of your home. So the general rule is you base the interior condition of the home based on the exterior condition of the home. So if you got an average uh, or average to good, well-maintained exterior uh, property, they're gonna estimate that your property is average, uh, the average plus maybe on the interior of your, of, of your property. Is it a perfect system? Absolutely not. Uh, but it's the best system that uh, around because you don't want uh, as I alluded to, again, alluded to earlier, uh, you don't want uh, somebody coming to your home and the town can't come into your home uninvited. We still live in the United States of America and nobody can enter your home unless you invite them or unless they have a warrant. Uh, so, um, uh, so it's based on that. People will say, my neighbor has an updated, my neighbor and I are assessed the same, but he has an updated kitchen that he just spent $40,000 on. That's not fair. Mm, uh, there's some truth in that, that, that it's not fair. But what happens over the course of time is the assessor's office will eventually find out, <coughs> eventually find out about the upgrades in that house. And they're gonna find out because quite frankly, their neighbors are gonna blow them in because their neighbors are gonna be paying a, a higher, uh, uh, having uh, the same assessment, they're, they're going to be subsidizing, gets back to the example I showed, they're subsidizing their neighbor's uh, uh, taxes in, in that instance. So um, it won't happen in this year, and it probably won't happen next year, but eventually over time, it, it does get caught up. Another tool that the assessors use is the multiple listing service. Okay, when properties sell, a lot of them go, well, whether it be multiple listing service or Zillow or any other online uh, uh, real, real property, real estate uh, 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 form that people go on now and engage in. Uh, what do you do when you list your property for sale? You talk about, you talk about that $40,000 upgraded kitchen. You talk about that quartz countertop you just installed. You just, you know, you, you talk about the jacuzzi tub. Uh, and you talk about all those things. Those are all things that can put in to the assessor's uh, property inventory on the property. So when the property, if the property sells down, uh, you know, in the, in the, you know, let's say a year after uh, for the next reassessment project, they'll have an upgraded condition report on those properties. Okay, just to continue, one, one other question. Doesn't the assessor office have uh, information from permits for renovations that you can look yes, at yeah, over the years? Yeah. Yep. So you, you can assess the interior renovations Assume. by the permits that, that were paid by, by the home buyer? Assuming, assuming the, the, yes, assuming the uh, property owner uh, took out permits, you would be correct. 
Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to go. Um, I'm just going to go online and on the phone, and we'll circle back in person. Online, Jake says, have you ever done a reassessment because market values have tanked? Have changed? Have market values have changed? Does it mean drop? Yes, they've I'm dropped. I'm assuming he means drop. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I got into that uh, again during my presentation. Uh, uh, no, because we've been doing this for 15 years, and property values haven't dropped in 15 years. You know, back in the uh, 2008, uh, when you had the housing crisis in the rest of the country, uh, Western New York uh, did not experience that because we never had the spike in values. Now, what you're what we're, we're experiencing is we're experiencing a a sharp increase in property values and what is going to happen somewhere down the line is those values are going to start to come down i'm not going to say they're going to drastically drop but there is going to be a drop at some point and again why you encourage your municipalities to do frequent reassessments is that when those drop you got to make sure that the town boards do a reassessment project at that time and I would say that the really the way to address it and be equitable about it is to do regular reassessments or cyclical reassessments where you're reassessing a certain percentage of the town each year, wouldn't you say? Correct. That's, that's the best way to do it. Okay. All right. Uh, on, on hold, we have David. Hi there. Hi. Well, thank you for taking my question. Um, we live in a neighborhood where... I would say the vast majority of our houses are not Penfield. Um, in other words, on the valid sales list, you know, my comparables, which would be, let's say, a 1935 to 1940 colonial, um, are really best represented by the other homes in my neighborhood. And we really represent about 10 houses out of maybe 102, 110 that are in the town of Penfield itself. The question is, when presenting comparables, um, how, what would be the best way to handle that situation? Is it valid to use comps from the town of Brighton, which is the adjoining community, or should I focus on that valid sales list from Penfield? Thank you. Uh, Could you hear the great question? question? Okay. Great, great question. And uh, this, is, this is, yeah, this is one of these situations. Again, if it was me, if I were in your situation, uh, I would go in to the neighboring town. If you feel that they are most representative of what's going on in your in your neighborhood, that's what that's what I would do. Uh, I have had we have had like I said, I, and when we've done other communities, we've done uh, two other communities that had this uh, happen where we had to go into a neighboring uh, town to use comparable sales uh, to do it, and. Uh, it was, we felt and still feel it was the most appropriate thing to do for, to be fair and equitable to the, to the neighbors, to the, to that neighborhood. So, uh, yeah, I would, uh, I mean, it might be a little bit more difficult for you to do because the sales aren't going to be on the town. Or they may be, I don't know if Brighton has them on their website or not, but uh, if you, Penfield has all the sales, so you'll, you'll have to do a little bit more work, but that's what I would do to go on, go into Brighton. All right, truly appreciate it. And for others listening, um, Monroe County has an excellent resource where you can do an export and come up with a list very similar to the Penfield Excel file. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you, David. Okay, back to in person. My question has to do with the New York State real property law, and I want to know what is legal and what is not. Is it done? My understanding is that it was done here in Penfield in 2014. Now, in that case, I bought my house a year ago, and it immediately jumped up, which was fine. I understand that. But then again, it also just, again, jumped up again this in, year, in 2022. Is it supposed to be done uniformly all through the town, or when you buy a house, does it just jump up? So, you, so when you bought your property, uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not familiar with how the assessor, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, puts market value, put uh, how how he does it. Uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, you can't do uh, individual assessments. Generally speaking, I didn't think so. Uh, so, uh, 
you have to do a neighborhood if he if he just if he just selected your property out um i don't know if that would be appropriate well if that's he did what a neighborhood happens. if he did a neighborhood it may be appropriate well i'm in a, com a townhouse complex so it was oh, singled out okay. It was singled out. When I bought it, it, it went okay. up substantially. I understand what they set it for. Yep. Now, a year later, I get an, another increase for what I consider excessive, but that's neither here nor there. I'm not here to discuss that part with you. I want to know about New York State real estate law. And is it, is it, to, yeah, is not, it allowed I'm, to I'm, I'm not, just not a, increase when you purchase a place? Yeah, like I said, like I indicated, it's a rule that's generally not the rule, uh, but uh, I'm not an attorney either. So, or an I'm not an assessor either. Uh, I'm a real estate appraiser. Uh, uh, so I, I can't I can't answer your question. Uh, Thank you. Specifically. So I think also you should um, ask the assessor as well, just to get a full response. Yes. Thank you. Um, quickly, Lindsay. Can you explain the difference between a bank appraisal fair market value versus a town assessed fair market value? Well, you know, there, there's a there's a cartoon that's been around for as long as I've been in the business, so 40 years, that it's a cartoon that has a shack, and it says uh, this is uh, this is what your uh, uh, this is what your uh, this is what the uh, you want your assessor to believe that your property is worth, and then they'll have a nicer home. Uh, a mansion and they'll say this is what you want your banker to believe the value of your uh, of your property is so um to answer your question uh there should be no difference the the value of your home for a refinance or a a, a sale appraisal should be no different than a uh than an appraisal for a uh you know or, or an assessment on your on your property so there, there there really shouldn't be the market value is market value um now market value as i alluded to uh earlier to an individual you know this is not an exact science you know there are ranges of market value and uh you know um you just want to be make sure that you're, you know, there there should be an acceptable range. If you get three appraisers, you 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 know, you, you might have three different numbers, but they should be within ten percent of each other. Uh, but they're not going to be on top of each other. Uh, so there's going to be a little bit of difference, but the, but market value is market value, no matter what the purpose of the appraisal. Thank you. Okay, moving uh, to the phone, we have Steve on hold. Oh, good evening. Um, I have a question regarding um, when this assessment was done. Um, I, I guess I look at it that it was kind of like at the peak, peak of the market, or the or the bubble is about to break type of thing. And uh, in the words of uh, Alan Greenspan, the irrational exuberance. Um, with interest rates climbing, inflation at a 40-year high, and we're heading into a recession, there is no way that I would get the price um, today that I would have, say, a year ago, just because the economic conditions have changed so drastically. So that whole that whole reassessment uh you know going up uh, 58,000 in my case uh, it's it's not comparable to today so so uh, I, I mean where do we go from there well uh uh I'll re I'll, re I'll I'll say this respectfully okay property values have gone up significantly uh, in the last 12 months okay the market value of homes have gone up uh, close to double digits, if not double digits, over the past 12 months in Penfield, okay, uh, uh, and other places, and other places more, may, more so in other, may, perhaps in other places. So, market the 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 what everybody is talking about, whether it be a potential bubble burst, which I don't believe it's going to be a bubble burst. It, it's going to be a it's going to be a, 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 a lowering of values, but I don't think it's going to be a bubble burst. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Um, but the uh, the higher interest rates, as I alluded to, is going to slow the market down. Uh, you know, I, I believe. Um, but your, the assessor's job is to value the property as of, as of a specific date. 
Okay, and that's what that specific date is. They're looking at taxable status date, March 1st, with the valuation date of the preceding July. So they're, you know, it gets a little, a little confusing, but they're looking at what was there March 1st, 2022, but they're going to value it as of July 1, 2021. Right. And if you understood what I just told you, you're better than me. Uh, it's a little confusing. Uh, but, but the long and short of it is, as of March 1st, property, your property value have gone up uh, since March 1st of last year in, 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 in general terms. And again, don't be concerned about how much your assessment went up. Be concerned about what you could sell your property for. Are you willing to buy it? <laughs> you are, you yeah, are right. a paid you are a paid appraiser for the town of Penfield. Am I right in that assumption, sir? You are no, I am not. No. Well, this okay, very good. No. So, do we have no. any paid town officials I here? I am as in, I am as independent as you can get. But you're not being paid for this service to the town of Penfield. That's my question to you, oh, sir. I'm be, oh, I'm being paid for this presentation tonight. Absolutely. Okay. So you have a fiduciary responsibility to the taxpayers to be within the realm of reality. And that's what I'm doing. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, I got a 48% increase in assessed value. What, what, did, I just tell, what did I just tell you? What did I just say, sir? Okay. I, I, sir, Would you I like said, to buy my house at that rate, sir? Your, sir, do you have a... Pay attention to what your assessment went up. Pay attention to could you sell your... $144,400 it went up, sir. Okay. That, Would you I like to buy you. my home for 10% under the assessed value? Because I will sell it to you this evening. Okay. Do you have a... Thank you, sir. Is that your question? That was one okay. of my questions. My other question, addressed it to the, I, I assume you're a Penfield yes. representative, ma'am. Yes. You're the town supervisor. We have three paid security guards here tonight. Were you expecting an uproar? Actually, that's our normal turnout is three security guards now. And where was this meeting posted? Because I was home eating dinner when I saw Mr. Mullinex on TV 10 and circumvented my dinner to come here for this. Oh, I'm glad you could make it. It's been online. It's been announced at town board meetings. Uh, it's been on social media. Uh, we've actually tried to do a very fair job of getting the word out. Okay. And Thank you very much. As town supervisor, would you be ever so kind as to tell me how our neighboring town of Irondequoit felt the information was insufficient for an assessment in 2022, but yet Penfield wants to proceed with in my case, a 48% increase in value property. So here's what I would say to that, and I've answered it actually in other news articles when I've been interviewed, I think even Channel 10. Um, Irondequoit, I cannot go into, I don't know all the reasons why Irondequoit made the decision that they did. What I can tell you is that by delaying it a year, we see absolutely no signs of the market cooling off. And in fact, wait just a moment, let me finish, please. We see it being just as much of an increase, if not five to 10% more. Okay. And I, don't I don't believe that for a second. No, that's it. I don't believe that for a second. Okay. Inflation at a 40 year high. Continue on your topic. Would we all assume that realtor.com would be the probably the most knowledgeable source in the industry to value real estate. Would that be a fair assumption? I don't know realtor.com, I can't answer that question. They're the, they're the number one listing brokerage house for all realtors across the United States of America. You don't know of realtor.com? I don't know how they operate, I'm sorry, okay. I don't. I'm holding an article published on April 25th of 2022. That would be this week where they list the 10 metropolitan areas in the United States of America with the largest decreases in home value in 2022. Number one is Toledo, Ohio. Number two is Rochester, New York. Is that the city of Rochester? Because there's a difference between, I think, the city and the suburbs. I would well, have I'm to I'm sure there is. I don't even that. live in Penfield. I live in Webster, but I pay your taxes. So folks, I want to make sure that we get to other people. The Rochester housing market waiting. has been red hot since the summer of 2020 when buyers were in a frenzy attempting to snap up the few listings that had come onto the market. Okay. I want Amanda's to move on. Still I want high. to make sure that everyone gets their chance. And I still have people waiting. Okay. 
but so that's what I think that is the Rochester. They're talking about the city of Rochester, and that is different. Okay. Okay. I mean, we touch the city of Rochester, we touch around the but we must be immune in Penfield from what the surrounding areas are doing, right? It's kind of cute, but it's not going to fly. I've been a resident of Penfield for 30 years, own three different homes, and it's just not going to fly. You're going to get an insurrection. I hope that you will take it up when you meet with your assessor. That's the process if you want to. Well, and that was it. also quite keen. The town sent out a letter dated March the 22nd. So it could be any one of the 30 plus days, 31 days in March, that this hit my mailbox. But it also had an expiration date, which I see you've amended, that we had to be in touch with the town to schedule an appointment by April 8th. I did not leave town until March 30th. This was not in my mailbox. We, it, well, got I know it got extended. It got extended, but the original date was intention to supplicate this process. Actually, April 8th, in the peak, in the scheduled in the peak of the spring break for people in this area. It's quite crafty, well, sir. Sir, sir unfortunately, do. sir, unfortunately, due to the the New York State uh, tax laws, uh, you have to hold these hearings in March and April, and, I, and we understand that the snowbirds go south. And it, ideally, you'd like to do this maybe in uh, over the summer or in the fall. But uh, the, the the dates are set by the state, and this and they have they have to be held in March and April. All right, I would like to move on to someone who made a comment online. May, may Please do. Mr. Yes, Robert, yes. Mr. Preston is still on hold on the phone. He Please do. Finished. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Preston. Go ahead. Well, getting back again uh, and listening to the last conversation, um, it kind of proves my my point that what uh, could sell for an, just an outrageous price in March of 21 compared to March of 22 with the economic changes that that are going on and have already gone on by the economic numbers, the highest uh, inflation rate in 40 years, that's uh, hardly a sign that the, the uh, housing market is still strong and that I'm going to be able to get what my next door neighbors got um, two or three years ago or anything like that. The, mar the market has not, what, what, what may be going on now has not caught up with the market yet, okay? The, these, these recent uh, things that we're experiencing maybe since uh, February, March, April, okay, th those, haven't been, those haven't been felt in the marketplace yet. So maybe later in the year, you, you'll see it. But remember, the assessor is valuing the property as of March 1st, not September 1st of 2022, not November 1st of 2022, of March 1st, 2022. And the sales, you know, we, you know, as I alluded to, the buyers and sellers in Penfield, they create the market, not the assessor, uh, not the town board. Uh, it's the, it's the, it's the buyers and sellers in the marketplace who are well informed and, uh, the sales that are used for the project, uh, they won't show up for another six months or 12 months, and maybe they will show a decrease in value. I don't know. Well, well, uh, well, knows, if, that, if that's the show. case, if that's the case, then why don't you postpone it for a year to see where we are in a year from now instead of doing this at the top of the bubble when, when there was the, the feeding frenzy but, but, for houses? S sir, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. With the recession and all that going on. Sir, it gets back to my point. The, the, whether the value, your value goes down is not is going to have very no impact on what your taxes are, okay? Because the taxes are set by the tax levy, okay? So if you think your if your assessment's going to go down next year, your taxes are going to go down. I, I you know I that's a fallacy. I, I I did it in my presentation. I I showed how how the uh, how how it's arrived at, and if you think that your your lower assessment is going to mean lower taxes. Uh, because everybody's going to be treated the same. I could lower every, my example was I could lower everybody's assessment or the assessor could lower everybody's assessment 60% in the town next year. And your taxes would be 100% to the penny what you paid this year. There wouldn't be any change. So again, concentrate on the market value of your home as of March 1st. Okay, we have one more comment online. Can you tell me who is responsible for our property taxes in Penfield? of how much 
for each taxing entity? Well, actually, I can answer this. Um, so with every dollar that you spend, think about a dollar in taxes, 8% of it is for the town, 24% of it is goes to county taxes, the remainder, 68% more or less, goes to your school taxes. Okay, that is the actual breakdown per dollar. And I think that's really important to note. Okay. Thank you. Now, uh, on call, John. John Steepy. Hi, John. <laughs> you had trouble with the last name. Um, hi, we, we live in a, um, a development. Uh, we have a Cape Cod, and in this development, it's kind of a mixed bag of what we have. We have apartments, we have condos. Uh, some with uh, one floor, some two floors. And uh, there are single-family homes, but they don't really turn over a lot. So I'm wondering, first of all, how far out do I need to go? Oh, and I should add that right behind us are office buildings. So how far out from this particular area, this, let's say this development, do I have to go to get good comps? Okay. Uh, your property, like every other property in the town, is put in a neighborhood. Okay. Uh, each, uh, the assessor's records have uh, numerous neighborhoods throughout the town of Penfield. And you want to stay, uh, preferably you want to stay inside your neighborhood. I'm not familiar with uh, with uh, uh, the Penfield neighborhoods, so I, I can't describe, uh, uh, tell you exactly where to go with your property. But, you know, a neighborhood is more than one, two, or three blocks. You know, it, it, it's usually, you know, if I had to hazard a guess, you know, it's probably a, you know, maybe a 15 square block uh, area. Uh, that uh, that you'd be looking at. So you know you start with your you, you start your search close to around your your home, and then you just keep expanding it, going out in every direction uh, until you think you have an ample sample that will uh, support your uh, your case that you're looking for. Okay, well that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> another question: uh, we we are assessed with five bedrooms in our house. Two of them are upstairs and there's no bathroom they're basically uh, used for home office now do they still constitute being bedrooms yes yeah. they would still be considered bedrooms well although because although you're not using them for bedrooms they were originally designed as bedrooms and uh, uh, they would still be considered uh, bedrooms for uh, assessment purposes Okay, so not having a bathroom on that floor has no impact. Well, the overall bathroom count does go and come into play with valuing a property. So you want yeah, to make sure I understand that, that. So, so if so, if you if they have you down for the correct amount of bathrooms, uh, yeah. I mean, again, if it was me, you could you could make that argument, I guess, before the board of assessor review. You know, what's it going to be worth? Is it worth two thousand dollars? I mean, you're not looking at a five or ten thousand dollar reduction because of that. Right. You know, um, but, uh, you know, uh, not having a bedroom uh, or a bathroom, I'm sorry, on the second floor uh, could would be con could be considered a form of obsolescence. OK. All right. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, audience, one. Can I just want to make sure that everyone tries to get in their first question? Do you want to ask quickly? Yep. I'll try. Um, well, first of all, I wanted to thank you for inviting me to this. You're welcome. Okay. Um, and Joe, thank you. Nice presentation. I can see you put a lot of work into it. Thank you. Um, during my 10-minute uh, phone conversation with, with Mark, he indicated that um, overall the values were up 30% in Penfield. My observation here quickly with everybody here, we're all at least 40% or higher. Now, uh, I'm leading into when 
he did the calculation on the website, and when you did the calculation with Phil and me uh, in, your, in, in the conference room, we were both up 10% year over year in our taxes. So everybody here is going to be up 10, 11, 12% using the calculator. And keeping in mind that the, there's a caveat with the calculator, and that is Webster schools and Penfield schools were blended to make that, and if you're in Penfield, you may be in a situation where your taxes are actually going to be higher because of the Penfield school taxes. So my tax could be 10, 12%, according to the calculator, based on the assessed value. I'm, I'm curious, it's a 10% increase. Why? I mean, so everybody's concerned. And again, we can go back and you say, well, tax levy is going to change. I get that. But the, the calculator should be, um, should be adjusted for that tax levy change. Right? Okay. So why, why, is it, why does it appear that so, taxes are going to go up 10 or 12 percent for me? I or, don't for everybody dare, else? Um, because the assessor set that up. So I don't really want to drill down into the math of that. But here's what I could say. Um, assessment has changed. What has stayed the same, at least for the town board, is that we're still fiscal conservatives and not looking to you know, use that waste money, not looking sure. to um, put an undue burden on people. Um, we are still very, I think, careful stewards of the monies that are entrusted to us. So I feel like, you know, we're going to do our job in terms of keeping the tax levy low. Um, I don't know that I want to, again, drill down into the math of it because I wasn't the one that set up that calculator. Right. So why don't we follow up with each other tomorrow? That'd be fine. Okay. Yeah. It's Mark, right? Can I, can yeah, it's I, Mark. Can I, take a little, can I take a stab at this though, a little bit? Yeah. Okay, sir, uh, I think your question, your, your, uh, if I recall correctly, your, uh, yours and others in the room, maybe we're going up, let's just call it an average of 40%. And uh, the net, uh, they, they estimate it that the increase for the town overall was 30%. And you, and you wanted to know why the, uh, uh, you want to know why the, uh, uh, calculations for the, for the. Uh, that's what I'm, I'm 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 missing here. What 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 do you what do you think the website should have? The the town has provided a calculator. Yeah, I was would... on it today. I was on it today. Okay, so it's showing my taxes will go up roughly ten to twelve percent. You pump, and I you would put in your old assessment. You put in your old assessment and the new assessment. Yes. The and, new they assessment. The low, and they had the and they had the different estimated tax rates. So the tax rate was lower in 2022 yes. than it was for 2021. Yes. Okay, and it showed an increase of 10 percent or whatever. Yes, year on year. Okay. Now I would expect okay. I would expect that taxes will probably go up. I know the economic conditions being what they are, we might see an increase in taxes, but I would expect to see something roughly roughly two percent or so. Could be a little more, a little bit less, but two percent or so is what I might expect in my taxes year over year, not 10% or not 12%. And well, you just- that, Well, that, uh, norm, normally I, I, would, I would agree with you, that, that would be uh, accurate, but I, I, I can only state that again, I can't, I can't help you with what your last year's assessment may have been, when I say that, you know, your yes. prior assessment could have been a low assessment. Okay, so, and so if that's the case, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna make your increase look higher. Uh, uh, you know, uh, so that's why I all. That's why I had reiterated throughout the uh, throughout the uh, presentation tonight. Uh, don't don't worry about how much your ta your assessment is increasing because uh, nobody can do anything about that. Uh, what, how much it's went up. All we can help you with, what the assessor and the board of assessor review at the end of this month can help you with, is what 
a fair mark, a, a reasonable estimate of fair market value is for your property. So if you think your property is equitably assessed at the new number, you don't have an argument. Um, you know, your taxes are going to go up that much. If you, if you think you do have a case and you can get your assessment lowered, then maybe it will get down to that 2 or 3% okay, increase. Uh, yeah. But you don't use last year. You can't use last year's assessment because it might have been artificially low. But if everybody's taxes go up by an average of 30%, given the calculator. They're not. No, they're not. Huh? They're not. The town no, overall it's... is going The town overall is going up 30%. That's town, not everybody. Yeah. Okay. Some, yeah, will, some go will be going down. But on average, it's 30%. So on average, we're going to see roughly an 8% increase, 7, 8% increase in taxes year on year based on the calculator that you guys have provided and the new assessment. And, That's and, just and, the and math. And your value, if, if, if your value went up 40% and your taxes are going up 8%, 9%, that's a pretty good return. <laughs> I know nobody likes to hear that, but as I said earlier, my house is my biggest asset. If, if I got to pay an extra $200, $300 a year and somebody's going to tell me it went up 40% in value, I'll pay that every day and twice on Sunday. Well, it's... it's I'm really paying an extra 4000 Yeah. Yeah, that's the I'll problem. The 12 I'm already paying. I'd like to have a $16,000 a year annual tax bill. Okay. Got an answer to that one? We, so. Folks, we're not. We, we can follow. We can follow up tomorrow. Thank That's you. That's fine. We can't discuss individual properties. Do you want to ask your question? Real quick, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot to ask one other question. When I was up before. Uh, so I was reassessed about three years ago. Uh, does that mean that I still have to go through this whole thing again? Or uh, I mean, because when you look at comps, they're based on a three-year look back. So. Being reassessed within the last three years. Um, yeah, you, yeah, you have to. You're, you're, yeah, because it's pulling up sales for the last two years. So if you, uh, well, I said three. Yeah, everybody, got, everybody got reassessed this year. Okay, so even though it was reassessed three years ago, it doesn't right. matter. Correct. <laughs> the point of the Correct. assessment is that it's all done at the same time, so okay. it's uniform. All right. We have one person on hold, uh, Steve. And then I do, we are going to have a hard stop at 730 because there is another meeting that occurs after this. So we'll get what we can in before 730. Okay, Steve. Okay, thank you. Um, I was intrigued by the comments that the appraiser is sitting out in the road as of March 31st, 2022, and looking at, the, at my house, which... Uh, the town has increased the, my value by 56%, and dollar-wise, it's a $129,000 increase uh, in my assessed value. So I am looking at some serious numbers that turn out to be about $1,350 per the town of Penfield's calculator. Now, I'm a senior citizen. I'm planning on living here until the day they take me to Holy Trinity Cemetery in Webster. Uh, but I have no intentions of moving, so I really don't care what my value of my house is well, when I do drop dead. But now the question is, as the assessor is outside my house, he surely knows that uh, 600 feet down the road a commercial enterprise is being built there, which is going to bring in over 200 uh, employees every day and uh, numerous school buses will be running up and down my street in front of my house together with the employees getting to work to drive those school buses and also to maintain those uh, uh, buses. So the question is, what is the, the assessor doing to, uh, why is he raising my rate so high? I should be looking at a significant decrease. Don't you agree? Uh, 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 sir, uh, what you what you bring up here, I, I brought up in the course of my presentation that uh, neighborhood influences do impact value. So uh, again, if I were you, what I would do is uh, I would schedule an appointment with the Board of Assessor Review, and I would basically tell them exactly what you just told us tonight. I would take photographs of your neighborhood and explain why you believe your neighborhood influences impact your market value. Okay. 
But I, I guess I was under the impression they would have anticipated this and uh, why I'm looking at such a hard uh, assessment yeah. increase at this time. Well, I, I, can't, uh, I can't answer that question, uh, but uh, you obviously feel that they did not do it and maybe they didn't take it into consideration enough. Uh, so I would uh, I would schedule an uh, I would schedule an appointment with the board of assess review and and uh, make your case uh, before them. Okay. One other quick question I might ask is the the square footage uh, rate for that the realtor sets versus the the square footage selling price. Uh, don't you think in a market environment such as this, what the professional assessor or excuse me the real estate agent is set the price for on a house should be more of the going rate for comparisons at this time of uh, uncertainty in the market? Well, real, with all due respect to realtors, I'm not a realtor, but my father was a realtor for 40 years. Okay. With all due respect to realtors, they are in the business of uh, selling homes. They're not in the business of mark of uh, valuing homes. Okay. To a degree, you want to hire a professional licensed appraiser to value your home. Uh, if you're looking for an independent opinion of value, you can have, uh, there are realtors out there uh, who will give you, who will lowball uh, values, just trying to get a listing uh, uh, to, uh, and then get in and then create, try to create a bidding war. Uh, we've seen that a lot over the course of the last few years. And then, uh, you know, they, they're not, they're not going to tell you the property is worth too much because they don't, if, if it, if they, if it, if they say the property is worth $200,000, and they say put it on the market for 200, and they get no offers on it. It makes them look bad. So they're gonna they're gonna give you a low offer uh, sometimes, uh, so they can uh, uh, create a bidding war. Quite frankly, so uh, go with a go with a licensed professional appraiser. They'll give you the most independent uh, opinion of value that you can get. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. One more yep. question from the audience. I got a kind of a unique property uh, looking for comps. I own eight acres of land of which just over half an acre, maybe pushing three quarters of an acre is flat. The rest is a very steep sided ravine, heavily wooded, useless, truly useless property. Uh, it's part of a, a property that was subdivided three times in the last 150 years amongst family, and I'm only the third family to inhabit this piece of property. Can't sell any of it, can't subdivide it, can't, it's useless. When, the, when an appraiser looks at it, an assessor looks at it, to look at it on a tape map, which is I'm assuming what happened in this case, he sees eight and a half acres of land and a house, and he's thinking this guy's golden. He's close to the town, he's close to the city, he's got eight and a half acres of land. If he does drive by on a public easement and looks at it, should he make an accounting for the fact that the land is, it's actually detrimental. Someone with a family with toddlers is not gonna wanna buy my property because the toddler wanders to the edge of this hill. They're gonna be broken badly before they hit the bottom. Uh, do they take that into account? How do I do comps? Sir, you, How do I are, do comps? I'm, I'm glad you. I'm glad you came up because this this is another example that happens. I'm going to say in in every town who goes to reassess some project. You yeah. hit the nail right in the head. It looks good on a plat map, right. your eight acres, but what in in reality, it doesn't look so pretty. Right. Okay. But remember, the assessor, a reassessment contractor. They're doing mass valuation. They're not. They're not appraising individual properties per right. se. I mean, they're putting values on the individual properties, but they're not doing an appraisal like like an appraiser would go out and value a a, a, a home for a bank or or a piece of eight acres for a, for a, for a bank for a for right. a mortgage or something. Right. So your case is a prime example that I would recommend uh, you go before the board of assess review. And you may you you state exactly what you just said here tonight. Yeah. Show them pictures of what your site looks like, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, I I could not argue with what you're presenting tonight. Why you shouldn't deserve a reduction? Okay. And a question to you: uh, Do they show on the assessor's records how much is the real the actual real estate's valued versus the building on the real estate is there two separate numbers they'll, they'll show a land value they show right a, well you they'll show a land assessment 
And, and then if it's I, improved, they'll show an improvement assessment. Okay, so it'll be two separate numbers to work with. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. And for all the crybabies, mine went up 100%. My taxes will go up 75% according to what just happened here. Thank you. Okay, uh, we do have to reset this room. We do have another meeting coming in. I do want to thank you. I do want to thank Mr. Eminger for his time this evening. And I'd also like to thank Greg, Patrick, and Steve uh, for their help this evening as well. Also, PCTV, thank you very much. I want to thank, I want to thank everyone for participating tonight. I, I enjoyed our conversation. Thank you. <laughs>